Hey friends, coming to you today to talk about the Canon 6D Mark II. My opinions on it, I haven't handled it, but these are my opinions on it being a 6D Mark I owner, user, you know, day in, day out. So um, I wanna cover a couple of topics. Um, I wanna cover 4K, I wanna cover dual card slots. I wanna cover the 1080p60 with EIS, 26 megapixel sensor, 6.5 frames a second, and the 4K time lapse. So in my view, the 6D Mark II should have 4K. In my opinion, the 5D Mark IV should have a more usable 4K. But what I feel like we're seeing out of Canon is that they don't understand how to distinguish between quality levels of 4K. What they very easily could do is instead of putting DCI 4K, they could give you UHD 4K. I don't think they do a very good job with, in, with this with their cine cameras either because on the C200, which they just released, you don't get 422 color space out of UHD 4K. So I think, you know, with Canon becoming a little bit more nuanced, hopefully in the next generation of their cameras, we'll start seeing 4K and segmentation of the quality of the 4K that is being output. In my view, a good 1080 is better than a moderately, you know, spec'd or whatever, or a, or a bad 4K. Um, I think the EIS, the uh, electronic image stabilization, I think a lot of their lenses being image stabilized. I think DPAF and I think that tilty flippy touchscreen all do a lot to ensure that the quality of the video that you're capturing in 1080p up to 60 frames a second is going to be as high, as qual high of quality as possible and Canon's color science is great too. So I think that there's gonna be a lot of room for this video, that the video that the 6D Mark II can make to be really useful for a lot of photographers that need to also do video, as well as for YouTubers, because full frame vlogging is great and DPAF is great. And so I think that there's gonna be a lot of people who want to use full frame DPAF with a tilty flippy touch screen and vlog with that. I know I do at any rate. And that 60p with optical flow in Premiere Pro will be able to turn out to be something like 120p if you elect to do that, or you can always use something like Twixter. I think that EIS is a big deal, and I think the DPAF is a big deal, because I think those two features really set up the next generation of Canon cameras to have 4K, but I think the EIS is really great in the 6D Mark II in particular, because I think it's particularly useful because that means you're doing less work in post. So for quick turnaround, you know, YouTube videos, or if you need to do like a one day edit, if you're doing a wedding or something like that, you're gonna be able to capture more in camera without needing more gimbals and stuff. So you're gonna be able to do more better without having to spend precious time in post applying warp stabilizer or whatever. Card slots, some people care and some people don't. I have never thought about it, wanted it, or needed it. That second card slot, I've never had a card failure. You know, I might be really lucky. My cards are three or four years old. They're 64 gig PNY cards I got off Amazon for cheap at the time. There was a sale running. Um, and you know, that's about all I have to say on that. I think there's a lot of room for them to be useful, but there's also a big part of me that says, if it's that important to you, then go ahead and you know take out a business loan and get, because a lot of people that I see complaining about it are wedding photographers. Go, and, go ahead and take out a business loan and get the 5D Mark IV. So the 26 megapixel CMOS sensor in the 6D looks like it's gonna be great. Now the, the reason why I was particularly drawn to the original 6D is that it had a lower a minus three EV focusing point, which the 5D Mark III at the time didn't have. 5D Mark IV and 1DX Mark II, I believe still only go down to minus two EV. So having that minus three EV AF point makes a big difference um, for shooting in a lot of very diverse lighting situations. Um, the ISO 40,000 from the images that I've seen online, obviously that's 1080p video on YouTube, um, can't take too much from that, looks really good. Um, you know, maybe not usable, but I'm gonna go ahead and imagine that up to 20,000, you know, 25,600, that kind of range is going to be usable. Um, I think it's gonna be a really wonderful feature to have because it's going to allow you to, again, do more better. The thing, the really important thing about the 60s ISO range is that it brings the 60 Mark II into the modern era in terms of ISO performance. I don't frankly believe that the 60 Mark I has aged well in terms of its ISO performance. 
Um, my Alpha 6300 has better ISO performance than my 60, and it's a smaller sensor, which doesn't make too much sense because the bigger sensor should have better ISO performance. So I think that's, that's a really killer deal on the, that sensor. So the six and a half frames per second, I think that's a big deal. I think a lot of things about this camera are, are a big deal um, because Canon's really kind of brought that bar up a lot more than I really anticipated they would. That 6.5 frames per second, by the way, is half a frame per second slower than the 5D Mark IV, which is awesome. So you know, there's probably gonna be a lot of people who are like, oh, I wish they were making all of their cameras faster, blah, blah, but the really important thing is that they hit. You know, you don't want, you know, 11 frames a second and you only get to keep three of them like I have on my Sony Alpha 6300 when I use adapted glass or or even non Sony like third party native glass. Um, so I think that 6.5 frames per second with a DPAF with a new 45 all across type autofocus points, I think you're going to get most of your shots in focus from everything I've seen so far. It looks like you will get a very high hit ratio. And so 6.5 frames a second, two frames a second faster than the, than the original 60, killer, because the autofocus is so much better, you're gonna be able to use all of them by comparison to the old one. So you're essentially getting fewer frames per second, but more keepers, and, and that's really gonna, that's, that's gonna make the difference. So the 4K time-lapse, I think that's, I think that's gonna be really good for BTS. I think there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna to want to be able to use this camera for behind the scenes stuff. But I think it's also gonna be great for general filmmaking, right? Because I use time lapses all the time and I use different kinds of time lapses all the time in, in the vlogs that I shoot and so forth and so on. I think that time lapse, you know, you can, you can tell a lot of story, you know, narrating over or just showing the passage of time with a time lapse and that is 4K output, which is fantastic. That's really important. And I think that that's gonna pair well with that 1080p60 with EIS because you're gonna be able to use this camera for a lot of situations, right? This might not be the best video camera in the world, but it's going to be one of the more flexible cameras that Canon makes right now. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, please don't hesitate to like or subscribe. Both of those mean a whole bunch to me. Um, I also have recently opened an Etsy store that has um, some LUT packs in there, and I use those LUTs on every video, both for my own little fake C-Log, as well as the S-Log 3 that I primarily shoot on. So if you wanna check out the gear that I use, there's links down in the description. Those will take you to Amazon, and they are affiliate links, so I will get a few pennies on the dollar if you choose to buy anything through Amazon after clicking through those links. So uh, that would mean a whole lot to me, and that would make a huge difference for me and the, the, the stuff that I can be talking about with you, you know, like hands-on reviews and stuff like that. So thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I'm really, really excited about this camera and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next one.